it's not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is a little death that brings total obliteration. I will face my fear. I am prepared to pass over me. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the mind killer. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Fear is the mind killer. Nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror. Fear is the mind killer. With paralyzes needed effort. Listening to Is Daily Wednesday with the one true Niz and Paul Gordon, featuring Newsfire, Sky Knitter, and Liberty Tech. And now here are your hosts, the one true Niz and Paul Gordon. Well, we're here. We have arrived. We're here. You're you're barely here. You've had quite an adventurous time, I've heard, leading up to this moment. Uh apparently Yeah, it was pretty wild. Was there was a bit of an epidemic, a bit of a snowmageddon that happened where you were. It's like it's like thirty feet of snow and right, uh, right, like like Donner Party kind of stuff going on. Neighbors were eating neighbors and pretty, pretty. Yeah, it pretty, was. Pretty, you want to you want to relate the horror? And it was close. It was that? it was close. It was close. Let me just let me preface this with I am originally from the north. I'm a Yankee, okay, and now I live in Texas. Yankee forever. And uh, <laughs> we've we've been here now for about three years. Well, a little 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 better than two. And uh, so, just say coming from northeast Pennsylvania, I'm not unaccustomed to snow or uh, inclement weather of of really any type. So S- snow uh, ain't no big deal. No, it's 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 no big deal. You know what I mean? So I've I think like a, before the show we were talking a little bit about this, and I said I think the worst. Uh, that I've ever had uh, experience, I guess you could say, that I've ever had in the snow was I had a Honda Civic for a little while, and uh, we got like four—I don't know what it was—14 to 16 inches of snow. It was more than a foot of snow. And uh, driving the Civic, you'd have to stop every three quarters of a mile or so and shovel out the snow from in front of the car because as you were driving, it would pack underneath the bumper and actually lift the front of the car off the ground to the point where the wheels weren't making contact anymore. Uh, so you'd have to stop and shovel it out. Yeah. Uh, so moved to Texas. Um, have not seen a flake of snow since we've moved here. And uh, Monday night, looked at the forecast. About two, about two, years, about two and a half. Two years, yeah, we're we're gone. we're pushing three in pushing three, September, right. October, September, up September, October. It'll be a th- is our three year mark. So we're coming up on two and a half, three years. So uh, have not seen a flake of snow yet since we've moved. You've here. seen flakes, but not flakes of snow. Not flakes of snow. Right. Correct. Uh, so Paul. Monday night, <laughs> so Monday night, I check the uh, uh, the forecast and it says, uh, you know, that there's going to be this big temp. Mind you, Monday afternoon was like 60 degrees. So I'm checking the weather Monday afternoon, and it's 60 degrees, and it's telling me that tonight is the uh, uh, two to four inches of snow, and I'm like, what? You got to be kidding me, you know? So. I'm, <laughs> Me being from the north, you're thinking it's okay. made up. You think it's fake news? It's like right, I think it's fake thing. news right off the bat. Right, I'm like fake right. news. 
Uh, I so even, I ain't even went, I ain't worried about that, man. I'm in Texas. I'm in East Texas. Right, so, right, okay. right. Don't I don't want to hear this, you know? They've done this before, and then you wake up the next morning and it's like 85 degrees. This this is this as so I'm thinking, oh, it's no big deal, whatever. Uh, so I go, I I, I tell my uh, I tell Amanda, I said, hey, you know, I I have to go uh, run out of the supermarket because I need to get things for lunch for myself for tomorrow and for Wednesday. And uh, so I go to the supermarket, me and my son, and we walk in, and it's like pandemonium. Dude, it was crazy. The lines in the supermarket, like where, mind so you, the forecast is the two to bread. four. Got to get the right. milk and bread. Right, this is the milk and bread, my milk and bread, my milk and bread, milk people. Got to get the milk and right. bread. Right, that, that's, the, that's these people that are out in force now. Mind you, the forecast is for two to four inches. So wherever we're originally from, two to four inches is like you're – your boss yeah. is gonna call you on the phone and be like, "Dude, you better be at work tomorrow, because but yeah, but we're only dead. we're only we're only getting two to four inches. You better right. be at work tomorrow." Right. So, right. and most no, times the schools haven't true. even. Some, yeah, sometimes four inches is fine. Sometimes four inches if it's really heavy. Yeah, even for us, we may we may have some shutdowns, but you'll have a two-hour delay. Maybe. Chances are you're gonna wake up tomorrow. There's gonna be a two-hour delay for school. Well, but we you're did going. only have about three inches of snow today, and we did end up having a school schools closed. But this snow was a really heavy snow. It was, you know, some. I mean, it was packed. It was three inches, but it was a packed three inches, and it was like it was like the, it was hovering, so it would get wet, and then it would get frozen, so you were getting ice. Right, so there was, that was ice. The big thing, the ice. Right. It was the ice. So there's two inches of snow, and it's pure pandemonium. Uh, and, there's a and line. An album, two inches of snow, and then an album by somebody. Right, by pure pandemonium. Right. <laughs> uh, no, there's a. So, I think there's a there's a album by a, a, a an artist. I think his name is Snow. I think it's called Twelve Inches of Snow. You can. Yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, it's that old Hot Stepper or something on it, isn't it? Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Almost whatever. Yeah. 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 Anyway, sorry yeah. for the diversion. Stop. I get easily distracted. <laughs> So, so you know you know in the supermarket where like the the supermarket manager is in that little booth you, you could go up to the booth and get like your your uh uh what are they called uh money grams and western union and all that oh, stuff right yeah yeah, you can yeah money your telegrams and stuff your your money right orders. right so there not only is every register in the supermarket open and the line is from the register all the way down the aisles to the back wall not only is there that okay but there's also a line at that booth where people are freaking out because the supermarket is out of bread and milk, and they were losing I, their marbles. I, I, can I ask one question? I don't know if anybody's thought about this. Why the run for milk? Why is why is milk considered an essential item if you feel like you might not get to the store in days? Why milk? Do you really right. need milk that badly? I can right. do without milk. Water is a little bit more important than milk. I don't understand the milk runs. And why bread? Why bread? Why do and you bread. have to buy 15 loaves of bread? You're running down the aisle in a panic with your arms filled with bread. Do you really eat that? <laughs> if, let's just say yeah, that for some reason of all is... the – Right, let's just say for some reason you can't get out of the house tomorrow. Do you or mean to tell me you... – Three days. You're going to need 15 loaves of bread and 32 gallons of milk. You're not going to get to all Seriously. that. You're not going to okay. get to all that. No, Some of it's no. going to get thrown out. Right. Yeah. So anyhow, it's 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 Armageddon in the uh, in the supermarket. And uh, it, I was in there forever, man. I only needed uh, a handful of things. Uh, like I said, lunch for, for, for work. Uh, so I was just going to get some sa some salad. I'm standing in line for, for a, head of, a head of lettuce for like an hour and 25 minutes. Uh, in this uh, supermarket line. Okay, I and, just want to uh, point out that you, at some point, had a choice to make. Do I stand in this line? Do I, I get continue bread. to stand in this line for a head of lettuce? And you chose to go ahead and accept the hour and a half wait time for a head of lettuce. Okay, duly noted. Right, well, once I'm duly in. Duly noted. Right, once I'm in, I'm in. You know, you know what I mean? Oh, okay. The, once, duly noted. Once I've duly fought noted. the hordes. Once I fought just the kind of and surreptitiously roll the lettuce down the aisle and just kind of walk seen, away. Have you seen? You've seen the three hundred, right? You've seen three hundred, right? The movie, yes. 
Yes, yes, yes. You know, it was like Thermopolis and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Blotting out the sun with the arrows. And he says, well, at least I'll have the right. shade. Right, 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 right. So that's what it was like. <laughs> Getting to the produce aisle was like fighting through the hordes of Persians. Oh, I see. I felt like a Spartan. I felt like it was. The, I was one of the three hundred. Like, I finally I've got my head left. <laughs> I'm like, I'm no, not, I will not I'm turn not, back uh, now. Right, I'm I, invested. <laughs> my daughter, my daughter turned me onto a video game on Steam. I, I'm not on Steam, but I'm. I just watching people play it on YouTube. It's called Get Over It. Have you heard of this game? I have not. No. Oh my gosh. So it's a game where you have to climb a mountain, mountains, but they're made out of weird things like, you know, household items, whatever. Uh, and you're using a, 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 an ax thing. And, and the game is designed in a way that you can easily, like you could, it's really hard. So you can easily be going along for two hours, building it up, building it up, and you could fall all the way to the beginning. You were at a certain point in that mountain where you were like, I am not, I am not falling to the bottom of that mountain. I am going forward. I am getting over it. That's what I picture. Now we're going to, we're going to officially begin the show now. Ready? That was just like the prep. Let's that was the warm up. We're going to, we're going to begin the show in five, four, three, two, one. And now the show has officially begun. By the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, you missed about eight, nine minutes, I'd say. Eight, nine minutes of kind of warm-up stuff that uh, isn't on the YouTube channel. So be sure that you go to Facebook and subscribe to the Liberty Principal Facebook page because that's where we air this show live. Is daily Wednesday is aired live at 9 p.m god's time which is eastern standard time of course i think i think i think that's covered in genesis chapter 38 i think something like that <laughs> not sure i to, had to look that up <laughs> right and right. god Never said that eastern meantime. standard time i may have that wrong <laughs> i may be in error so we're we're, we're we're we, we're 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 if if you're watching on youtube then you missed a, a story uh that niz relayed which you'll have to go to the Facebook version, which you can find if you go to uh, isdaily.live, you can find the archive of the show. And when everything's all said and done, you'll see the, the Facebook embed in there. Then you can, can see the part that you missed. But, but later on, after we get through this first segment, um, we're going to have another story for, for Niz to relay to us as well concerning all the loveliness that happened surrounding uh, two to four inches of snow in Texas. Mm. But but we're going to go forward with net neutrality. So let's play. This is Newsfire on iState.tv's Is Daily. What are the big stories, the big headlines everyone else is focused on? And what, if anything, can we, who pursue the power to act without threat or action of physical force, learn from these stories? This is is news fire we set your news on fire i don't know if you see the bump but the bumps that that we play they have pictures of us and the one that plays of you is you with that goofy oh yeah with the yeah, socialism yeah. Shirt. that was a fun <laughs> show that was or that was a fun uh, a fun day when that picture was taken fun okay. day it's, it has the it has the obama logo and the o for socialism and it says just say no to socialism Right. That's when you were still in your kind of state Yvonne, state face ways. Mm, I was on the fringe. That I was a minarchist. You're, oh, you were already time. on the fringe at that point? Yeah. All right. That was all yeah, right. I was minarchy all the way for me at that point. Oh, okay. Okay. So we're talking net neutrality. So first thing I thought we would do is we would just look at uh I got three stories lined up here and you know, feel free to interrupt me or interject as I'm sharing these three stories, but I'm just going to share them, the real brief nuts and bolts version of this. So this first story is uh, net neutrality restoration bill has 49 votes and counting in the Senate. So the net neutrality supporters in the Democratic Party have decided to continue to put their efforts into restoring net neutrality uh, rather than working on legislation to undo the regulation created ISP monopolies. 
And then this story is from CNBC.com. Apparently, they have, okay, well, I'll just read here. It says, the new tally, this is a tally of votes, revealed in a press release from Senate Democrats on Tuesday, brings a total to number of declared votes against the FCC's recent action to 50. A dead even split in the chamber. Just one more vote would be enough to pass Democrat Senator Ed Markey. So it's Ed Markey again. Bill in the Senate, which if made law, would effectively restore Obama-era rules on Internet service providers. Markey's bill, if passed, would be a blow. Well, whatever. So so that's that's <laughs> one story. And now we're going to get to the second story. And I see you're already amused. You're already getting the theme of the show here. Or the theme I of got the my segment. notebook out. <clears throat> okay. This this is probably an easy one for you. Uh, working to recreate statewide net neutrality instead of ending ISP monopolies. Are you noticing a trend? So the manner in which a lot of states are responding to the repeal of net neutrality seems to reveal the actual hidden agenda of what ne net neutrality really was. Okay, I'm not going to read all that. I don't want to get to that. I'm just going to get to the nuts and bolts of this. So... Some local communities are working on creating their own ISPs to compete with the monopolies, but most net neutrality supporters seem to be throwing their resources into three efforts. Create legislation at the federal level restoring net neutrality, create legislation at the state level restoring statewide net neutrality, and sue the federal government and force them to restore net neutrality. So some state legislators... They're waging their own fight to restore net neutrality rules after FCC moved to scrap them last month. Uh, as of Friday, California, Washington, New York, Rhode Island, Nebraska, and Massachusetts has all have all introduced net neutrality restoration bill or well net neutrality bills for at, at the state level. And North Carolina and Illinois are mulling similar legislation. And now the last story. Let me get to this. Come on. Okay, now the last story is a little counter, which is building local ISPs to overcome the net neutrality re repeal. And this is from Truth Dig. So Fort Collins, Colorado is planning to build its own Internet service utility, trumpeting are trumping the Federal Communication Commission's move last month to extinguish net neutrality. That doesn't really trump it, actually. That just does maybe what should be the response. So Fort Collins joins a growing list of cities opting to uh, into their own internet and opting out of big telecom. Now, in order for them to do that, by the way, they had to go through a long process. And the telecom spent millions of dollars to try to convince the voters of Fort Collins to stick with them and stick with their monopoly. And uh, uh, it was it was countered by the Institute for Local Self-Reliance, spent about $15,000 in ads to counter, and and they won. And now uh, now they're going to have that. Now they're going to be given permission to actually build their own Internet. So there we go. I've set you up. I know that you've <laughs> got been given, stuff in you. They've I mean, been I'm given like, permission. I'm like a slow pitch <laughs> Fastball right, right, right down right. the center for you. Go ahead. <laughs> First of all, of course, of course, Democrats. And I'm not just going to single this out on Democrats, but in this particular instance, it's Democrats. They want monop. They want monopolies. They want. That's why that the, this is why they're not going after these. I shouldn't say monopolies. These oligopolies, which is pretty much a monopoly, just a legalized. Monopoly. And in case you don't know, an oligopoly, uh, what an oligopoly is, it's a market structure where a small, uh, a small number of companies or firms has the largest majority of market share. So they could do things like have these, you know, little backroom deals. Let's 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 just take, uh, since we're talking about net neutrality, let's just take like Comcast, Time Warner, and what's another big uh, cable company? Uh. Well, Comcast, it, Time Warner, and, and, and whatever. Uh, whatever, whatever. Uh, yeah, I, Joe's. I'm on RCN. Freaking... RCN is kind of a mid-level one, but still big jo enough. Joe's, it, we'll just call it Joe's Big Cable Company. And Joe's they, what they Big is... Cable Company, yes. Joe's right. so you, big you can't gay legally. Cable. How about Joe's Big Gay Joe's Cable Joe's Big Gay company. Cable Company Yes, it's uh, is, of, is the third uh, one. So, South Park, <clears throat> right. So basically what they can do is they can call each other up, and Time Warner calls Comcast and says, hey, Comcast, let's have a uh, – 
a little sit down here with uh, Joe's Big Gay Cable Company. Uh, so Comcast calls up Joe's Big Gay Cable Company and says, hey, Joe's Big Gay Cable Company. <laughs> Time Warner wants to have a sit down with us. Uh, <laughs> Time Warner wants to have a sit down with us. So they all agree. They go to this meeting. And what they do is they say, hey, listen, let's let's all collectively raise our prices by like $35 over the course of the next year. And uh, they do it. And there's nothing you can do about it. And you don't have any other option. So you can suck it. You can suck an egg. And that's the benefit of an oligopoly uh, as, as far as how the cable companies and stuff are well, running. Dude, Why? But yeah, yeah, but what happens? I mean, so some little ISP is going to say, you know what? I can do it cheaper, but but what happens? Right, but then the oligopoly steps in with their lobbyists, and they go to Washington, and they say, yo, we need some regulation because this little guy over here has got some really big ideas. And he's dangerous. He's he's out of control. It's like you can't have these little ISPs just plopping up all over the place. National security is at risk. We'll have to lower our prices. Well, yeah, we can't have that. not only will we have to lower our prices, and then they this, this is the part where their lobbyist steps in. They tell their lobbyist, hey, listen, when you go there, make sure you tell them that if we have to lower our prices, their cut is going to get a lot smaller. So you right. best do something. And that's yeah, why yeah, the government yeah. does something. Now, the benefit... So- the benefit to the government here in this in this particular instance, whether it's the you know the right or the left, uh, is that once you allow these oligopolies to have this you know this control over the market, it's a lot easier to take over three or two companies to make it that government monopoly to give you government internet ISP service uh, rather than take yeah, over thousands. You don't have to take them over though, because the families no, no. are all going to the same parties. The families that own the ISPs that are also owners and managers of the course of enterprise that you call the state, they're going to the same party. So it is easier for the federal government to negotiate with a few parties, the back doors and whatever else that they want to have built into their ISPs to assure that if and when need be, that the government can can shut whatever has to get shut down. It's far easier to negotiate that with, you know, a few guys rather than right. hundreds of thousands across the country. And it's really not even that big of a negotiation if you take a because if you step back and you have you ever asked yourself, where's all this liberal bias in the media come from? Well, all you have to do is sit down and look at who's the person that you're paying on your cable bill. Uh, who you're paying that monthly bill to, who do they give your money to? I mean, just take the, you know, for instance, uh, for instance, we'll target Comcast because they're, I, I've had them probably for the longest, don't have them currently uh, as my cable provider. Actually cut the cord here uh, last week, right. so you I have no one for a cable provider now. Uh, so, but anyway, Comcast is, is, is what I'm most familiar with because it's what I've had for the most years. Uh, just take Comcast for instance. Every time I get a, I would get a cable bill from Comcast, I would wince. I would literally wince because I know that Comcast is owned by NBC, and I know that NBC is one of the larger contributors to the DNC. And so every time I can't pay that cable bill, I would wince and think, "Oh God, I'm paying for another one of these clowns." I wouldn't want to be paying for the RNC either, though. So <laughs> no, <laughs> I was just no. talking to Niz before the show, and. You know, the things that I'm seeing in the in the politic and world uh, in America specifically, I mean, there's plenty of stuff going on in other countries as well, but I'm like up close and personal and feeling it because we live here, here. in America because <laughs> I live here. Right. Because we live here. It's it's not a bias. It's a reality. So uh, I'm, I'm getting less and less interested in politics, in American politics, even Obviously, I'm not really part of the political system because I don't support a coercive association type model of governance. But to some degree, I saw some usefulness in paying attention to it and sharing the stories. This is what we do on iState.tv to a certain extent. But if you look at iState.tv, less and less, it's like, yes, I do share political stories, but I'm sharing them less and less. And what I'm sharing more and more, I'm trying to find the where the world stories that nobody's really focusing on like i focus a lot on rahava i don't know how many of you even have heard of rahava but if you if you have rejected the course of enterprise model and you haven't heard of rahava you're missing out on a pretty 
epic story that's going on right now as you have millions of people that are actually I don't I don't I mean I mean I think statelessness is the goal for this community but this million plus people however many they are I mean this is this is a pretty this is northern Syria it's Kurds in northern Syria but it's not just Kurds that are part of Rahava but there's just big story that's going on there as these folks are trying to walk this delicate balance like statelessness has emerged in a region surrounded by coercive associations and what are they experiencing whether they fail or whether they succeed there's incredible lessons that are that are being taught to anybody else that that wants to see this happen and that's not being talked about instead everybody's talking about freaking donald trump all the time and and they're all horrible. I mean, horrible, horrible right. people. They're just fundamentally awful people. Just they fundamentally to, awful. They want to rain, rape, maim, pilfer, destroy, cage, uh, send your kids off to die in opium fields. I mean, they all want to do this. All of these I'm, terrible, terrible, terrible human beings. And even just like talking about it and looking at these people, it's starting to make me violently ill. It's it's and there's so many things that are going on out there. Like even this net neutrality story. There are there are so many technologies emerging that that are gonna make net neutrality a freaking moot point. While the federal government and whatever operatives, whether you're pro or con net neutrality, whether you're fighting in the political halls of justice or whatever the heck you want to call it, 5G is coming online, which is going to totally blow the doors off of the whole, you know, limiting bandwidth. Mesh networks are coming online. There's all types of technologies that are emerging that... Net neutrality doesn't even address, <laughs> and it can. Right, right. You have something to say? Go ahead. Well, I mean, it's you know, it's to get back to to get back to our our conversation uh, about uh, net neutrality. Um, you know, you can I look at the back. look at look at look at the where they're trying to go. Look at look at the solution. You have a group of people who see a problem. Okay, and, they, and, they, and there's nothing wrong with seeing a problem and wanting to address or wanting to try to fix that problem. But look at the way that, that, that they are trying to go about fixing this problem. Number one, first thing you said, create legislation on the national level. Number two, create legislation on the local level. And number State three, and sue, local, right. sue to reinstate net neutrality. This is where the bulk right. of the effort is occurring. Is going to, right. Instead of actually proposing a solution to the actual problem, and that solution would be localized, decentralized, liberty alternatives, more freedom, less restriction, i.e. less regulation, the, this is the solution is more government, more force, more Well, the argument was... The argument in the beginning, and I was pretty agnostic about, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not supporting government regulations at all in any way, shape, or form, but the arg I, I understood from a pragmatic perspective, what is going to hurt the opportunity for the liberty to emerge more? Net neutrality being in place, net neutrality being removed. I looked into it, and I could see pros and cons. I could see why maybe you could look and say, yeah, if net neutrality is removed, this puts us in danger. So... What I see is, okay, net neutrality is done. Okay, it's been removed. Now you have a choice to put your blood, sweat, tears, energy, resources, Bitcoin, whatever you're going to put into it. And what are you going to spend it on? What are you going to spend your life blood on? Are you going to work on alternative solutions like helping people build mesh networks right where they're at? Are you going to work at the local I mean I'm not this isn't me I'm not involved politically but for those that have chosen to stay active politically are you going to work at the local and state level to kill the regulations that you say make net neutrality uh necessary and if you're not doing that then I'm highly suspicious that you never gave a damn about 
uh, bandwidth. You never gave a damn about the big bad ISPs controlling the internet without net neutrality holding them in check. What you really want to assure is that the government has its foot on our effing necks. And that pisses me off. Now, I, I'm... I'm not talking about the the folks that are not politically active. I know a lot of folks that, that you know they call themselves anarchists, libertarians, whatever they want to right. call themselves. That you're uh, specifically I, pointing towards the the voters. The, there's a, there's yeah I'm I'm specifically talking to the voters, the, the 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 politically active. I don't see among the anarchist crowd, even amongst the folks that thought that repealing net neutrality was bad for liberty, I don't see them now fighting to uh, restore net neutrality through the government. Uh, and if I did see that, I would, I, would, I would call you out, and I would shame you, and I would say, oh, this is what you're doing. And if you, if you chose the politically active route, okay, I'm not going to say whether that's smart, whatever. I personally am not choosing it. But if you chose the political route, why did you choose the route to restore a regulation rather than now going ahead to undo the regulation that you said that regulation was needed for? Why? I'd say that you have something else going on that you haven't come to terms with deep inside. There's, there's some, without a doubt, there's, there's a there's, vestige of statism that you haven't let go. Over the course, over the course of the last, I would, say, I don't even know when. When did this conversation begin? It was before Christmas, wasn't it? Because I remember doing a show on the Tortured Report it, where we, it's been going on long before Christmas, going on for quite well. I, I'm a not while. saying, I'm not saying, I'm not saying net new, I'm not saying net neutrality itself. I mean that's been. No, no, the, the 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 repeal thing is, you know. Well, right. I, I would so, say as soon as Donald Trump got elected, as soon as he, so really, so right right, right um, from the start, there was this talk that they were going to repeal net neutrality. Right, and and even even amongst libertarian circles, I, I've I've when I say that uh, you know uh, I I don't support net neutrality, like I don't support government enforced net neutrality, and I certainly. Uh, you know, don't support the government having anything whatsoever to do uh, with internet regulation whatsoever. And I think all of the regulations concerning the internet should be totally, 100%, a free and open marketplace with no government infer uh, interference whatsoever, from my perspective. And uh, I would have libertarians come at me and be like, "What? You don't support net neutrality?" Blah, 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 blah. And like, dude, wait a minute. Five seconds ago, you were just telling me how. Right, five seconds ago, I was just telling you how terrible the government is, and you're telling me, right, yeah, right on, high five in me, pat me on the back, out of boy. And then I say, <laughs> I don't want the government in my internet, and you're like, what? Are you crazy? You don't want government in your internet. Well, <laughs> again, the the arguments beforehand, the and and there are people that I, I know, there are people that I really love, totally respect that uh, anarchists who. They were saying, no, repealing net neutrality is bad. And they had a very pragmatic reason for saying that net neutrality is bad. And I'm I'm still not 100% sure that they're not going to be proven right to a certain extent. So the them having the argument beforehand, I don't have a problem with that. I, I, I can see, you know, I myself, that's why I, I, I held an agnostic view because I felt like I just can't figure this out. There's just too many technical details that I don't even understand. But I can look at the after effects and I can see, okay, this deal is done. Okay, why don't it, it for for those among the, the, the folks that reject, reject coercive associations, among that group that have decided that taking political action is still useful, I would argue that it's not. But if you if you've decided that, why would you spend your effort to restore a regulation instead of going after ending regulations underneath. And you can do it, I believe, you have more of a chance to undo local and state regulations. You, I mean, and then really, you think about it, you have an opportunity here. People, because I think most people that, that, that are looking at net neutrality ending and they're, they're thinking, Oh no, what are we going to do? You know, where our, 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 our price is going to go up. They're going to control the flow of information. You've got a ready audience that you could go to and say, dude, there's a solution. We're going to go and we're going to end the local regs. We're going to go and we're going to end the state regs, man. You got a built in audience right here. And right now go talk to that audience right now. 
in right. the figure freaking out. regulations. The answer, the, the answer to this to this problem, is not limiting choice or not limiting the ability for these big companies to 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 be able to fail. You see, I, I think I think a lot of this can be traced back to people just don't understand how it's actually supposed to work. What's supposed to be able to happen is Comcast is supposed to be able to, you know, raise your bill to some absolutely absurd level for terrible, terrible service. And then once they do that, what's supposed to happen is you're, you should have the ch- a choice and say, okay, well, they suck. They don't suck as bad. I'm going to go to them. That teaches Comcast a little lesson. What you're trying to do right now is limit the ability for these big companies to do that by saying, well, you can't do that because it's going to hurt people. Uh, and then they don't th- – that – innovation that would have taken place that you know the next company that would have come up that would have had a you know a, a better package a better service a more economical service a more pocket friendly service they're not there anymore to fill that gap because you haven't given them the customer base to do so yeah, is it going to hurt it's going to hurt a little bit in the beginning yeah is it going to suck yeah it always sucks you know but you're, you should have alternatives what we have right now is this oligopoly that's provided by the government and by all these regulations? You are providing this oligopoly, and you're 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 not giving the market the ability to bring competitors in to break up and destroy that oligopoly. What you're saying is we want we love what we have so much right now that we're willing to use the government gun to force everyone to have this forever. Right. So I say. Net neutrality is done. That debate is over. It is time to work on undoing those regulations that net neutrality uh, ostensibly uh, uh, protected you from. Now, I will. Hey, also you know what? Say, I want to just throw something. Can I just throw ahead. something out there? Yeah. I don't. I don't. Why has no one? Why has no one tried to start a uh, uh, a crowdfunding uh, program to provide better internet service? At a more affordable rate. Why has no one tried this? Why has no oh, one tried? Uh, uh, you know, uh, we all we all talk about voluntary society and this and that. Why has no one tried a voluntary ISP? Why has no one tried that? I mean, uh, are, are we? Maybe are, are, they have. have. I'm gonna have I'm gonna we start collectively. To look for that. I'm gonna. Start we, to I, yeah, that. definitely have to. Because my question is, <laughs> have we become the type of people who, I'll use my air quotes, collectively, collectively, uh, you know decided that uh you know we're 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 willing to talk the talk but we're not willing to walk the walk and do these things that we say are supposed to work and be so much better i mean it's it's time for people to you know in 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 the liberty community uh in general and i and i don't care whether you're and i don't care whether you're a republican a libertarian uh an uh, uh an, an, an ancap and an, i don't care what political label you want to put on yourself if you're someone who believes in freedom have we become the type of people who only talk and we actually don't put forth any of these ideas to show people that hey look there's a better way yes their way sucks you could see it every single time you get a bill every single time that you uh uh i, I should say a, a a bill like charges uh from like your your cable company or from whatever are we the type of people who don't want to put any skin in the game anymore I that that that's that's part of my outrage that I'm experiencing. And I do want to point out by the way. This isn't like this isn't Paul is taking the Republican stance and I think the Republicans are the good guys here. I don't think that that uh Ajit Pai or whatever the heck his name is that they they ended net neutrality necessarily because yeah, because they, they, they want to be. The, they the, want to open up the market and make it more free. They know the regulations that are underneath there, but are they talking about ending those regulations? Are the Republicans talking about undoing undoing that layer of regulations? No, 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 no. I think they're. I think they'll be just fine with those regulations staying just where they are. Right. So, like. You know, you talk about Donald Trump with all of these regulations that are being lifted. And it's like you just blanket just you're just looking at numbers. So you look at numbers, you say for every one new regulation, you know, he's undoing thirty five regulations, you know, he said like one to two, but he's doing even better than that. He's the libertarian president. I I don't know. Uh, I'm not going to make a judgment, but I'm going to say that I'm highly skeptical that if you look at the regulations that are being undone, that you're going to find out that those regulations, in most cases, the ones that he's undoing 
are simply ones that have held in held, held monopolies in check that uh, are there because of regulations underneath that they're not ending. That, in other words, they're they're gutting the regulation system, and what they're gutting from the regulation system are the regulations that protected uh, the market from monopoly creating regulations underneath. And I'm not saying that for sure. I'm just saying, I bet you nobody else or very few who are lauding the libertarian president, Donald right, Trump, right, right, because right. he's ending these regulations, know that either. So this is not a defense of the Republicans. Right, and, and this, goes, this goes back to there is no good guy. They are all that's right. that's, fundamentally that's awful people. Fundamentally awful people. If you are in a room with fundamentally awful people and you have it, it divides into two groups, one group you absolutely do not agree with whatsoever, and the other group you're like, well, you know, that guy kind of does make a couple points that I agree with. You have to keep in mind that they are still fundamentally awful fundamentally people who should people. not be trusted under any circumstances whatsoever because they are fundamentally awful. Awful, right? And I'm, I the 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 only real reason that I state dot well, there's two reasons that I state dot TV might be covering a political story, but no, three three reasons. One, something really funny and lulzy happened. Okay, I will cover funny and lulzy. Like I I don't know if I'll this. It's one of the stories that I could pick for tomorrow is apparently there's there's some sort of uh i don't know some sort of kerfuffle that uh donald trump's organs in detail are going to be revealed <laughs> that's kind of oh, funny <laughs> that's kind of trolly it's um, about his exceptional what, what was the phrase that he used He's an exceptional I, health for a stable genius. And is that yes, uh, such a, you know, you're like, <laughs> I got big hands. And let's just say the hands max the drapes. Oh, <laughs> so whatever, you know, that's the world you're Perfect. living in. Okay. <laughs> but, and then the other reason will be if there's something that's going on that really is a fundamental direct threat to, to liberty, like even everything is a fundamental direct threat to liberty that, uh, the course of enterprise is involved in, but like, like you know, while you guys are all not you guys, not the audience, I'm talking to uh, all America. While you guys America. are all uh, uh, the the story I did to today uh, for headlines that you may have missed, while everybody's raging over the latest Me Too hashtag or whatever it is, or or what 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 nutty thing did Donald Trump say? The Senate is about ready to just give a total green light to renewing that warrantless wiretap thing. That's going on right now. That's something maybe that's worth at least a right. pause paying. That's actually one of the things that everyone missed while everyone was uh, losing their minds over Donald Trump's shithole comment was right. the fact that exactly. Congress exactly. failed to stop it, and it went, it's gone now through the Senate. They didn't fail to stop it. They made sure it wasn't stopped. Even when there were proposals to try to limit the scope and ro ro uh, roll it back a little, those were shot down. And then you recently, I, I haven't checked into this in detail, but there's another story emerging where apparently the Trump administration is threatening to, I don't, maybe uh, somehow I penalize uh, local politicians who are part of, you know, who are saying that they have sanctuary cities or sanctuary states. It's like, that that would be quite an escalation if the federal government was saying that they were going to penalize. What does that mean? What does that lead to? That's something that bears watching. That's something, e even from an SHTF perspective, you're like, okay, if they're starting to talk like that, maybe you definitely better make, how much 556 five, do you have? Because 556 five, <laughs> could be, 556 five, is not just for protection, it's Bitcoin in SHTF. <laughs> So, <laughs> there you go. So that's right. these are something to consider. <laughs> and then the third thing is, and you don't have to bash people over the head again and again, 
run a bunch of stories. The third thing is, yes, there are opportunities to show people the the absurdity of a coercive association through a political story, but you don't need to hit them over the head. And they got enough fear porn all around them. We all have fear porn all around us all the time, and it's it's like it's toxifying. And you know, I'm I mean, I'm not just trying to pitch iState.tv. I I'm causally oriented. And I'm doing something on iState.tv, and I hope other people start doing it too, uh, other folks that are, are, you know, in the alternative media to think about this. You look at iState.tv, and there's a whole bunch of stories on there that offer hope. There's a, right. there's a whole right. slew of news that is coming out. There's a breakthroughs made, literally, every amazing breakthroughs that are being made at breakneck and it gets- speed. All of these things tend to get lost uh, in 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 the toxicity of the mainstream media because the the, the media, man, you are bombarded by terrible news, twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. Whether you're watching TV and you're watching any of the major networks, uh, or you're watching any of the cable networks, or you're on the radio on your drive to work, the, they have that little news break in every single time. It's nothing. Nothing but but things to make you shake your head and say, "Wow, this is this world. This world is terrible, and this world right. is We're not doomed. all terrible. There's awesome, amazing things happening every single day, every day. And if you were paying attention more to that, maybe you would be more motivated uh, to get up and do some things to end the toxic things that that are happening on the periphery of these great and wonderful things." If you if you were paying attention to uh, not just technologies but ways that people are now starting to to to, to come together and okay okay here's a there's some of the stories on i i state TV is uh the the power of vertical farming to bring food power to urban centers there's I mean vertical farming's been around for a while but the technology is getting more and more uh, efficient so you could start to see. Uh, lo- local communities within cities having fresh daily food. I mean, that's empowering. That's self-reliance. That's true self-sustainability. I am very interested in sustainability. Sustainability, it's kind of a dirty word because it's kind of a globalist word. And uh, when they used, whenever you hear somebody use the word sustainability, you really need to ask them to define their terms. Define what do you mean by sustainable? And you're going to find most of the time sustainability will be described at very large scale levels. I'm not for that sustainability because that sustainability is basically, you know, you get to the to the good of the whole kind of philosophy. You get to if if we want everybody, as many people as we possibly can to prosper and yada, yada, we, we need everything needs to be self-sustaining. When they say self-sustaining, they mean large systems, large systems that require central large authorities overseeing them. But when I use the word sustainability, I mean it at a very local level individual free association level and vertical farming is one of these stories there there are 3d printing spine parts that they're uh, uh that they're that they're now going to be able to implant into humans so that people who are have suffered from spinal cord in, injuries that you know down the road you're going to be able to 3d 3d print parts to fix their freaking spine so they're not paralyzed anymore i mean that's, yeah that's incredible it's, it's, it's incredible. It's, 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 a meteorite crashed to Earth, and apparently it contains the secrets to life essential elements. <laughs> Did you hear about that one? Who <laughs> I mean, knew? I know. <laughs> Who it's, knew? It's, it's just, right. uh, and this one, this one's kind of scary. It's kind of cool. Body parts printed on demand coming soon to a future near you. I mean, there's some dystopian tech to that, but there's some hopeful right. stuff too. I mean, this and these stories, they're there. All the time. I'm going through two. Th- I have a I have a secret sauce methodology for gathering news from across the interwebs from a wide variety of sources, and I'm looking for certain things. And I go through two to three thousand articles, and and I'm telling you, I cover. I put out thirty items a day, Monday through Thursday, and uh, I share another forty or fifty links. 
I, I get it down to 80 stories, and it's difficult, six, 60 to 80 on every given day. But it's still, it's difficult for me to get it to 60 to 80 stories because there's so many incredible things that are happening. And more than half of what I'm saying is good. It's good stuff. Right. There's all kinds of reason to hope, folks. If, if, if we stop paying attention to them. And we started paying attention to the ways that right here and right now we can actually build our liberty. One individual at a time, one free association at a time. I'm sorry, I ranted. No, because it all it, it, it all goes back to what we originally were saying with the local solutions, even pertaining to net neutrality, because the solution there is to make these big oligopolies and make the government uh, uh, fingers... Uh, in in the web, irrelevant. That's right. that's the that's the make them irrelevant. If you make them, then it it's, it doesn't. Yeah, none stop, of this stuff. Stop paying so much attention. I'm not saying you don't pay no attention. I'm just saying you probably, on average, even among the libertarian anarchist minarchist crowd, uh, you probably are paying attention about eighty percent more than you need to with what's going on politically. You, right. you don't have to pay that. You need to focus attention. on what's happening in, in, in your local uh, in your local community, in your local area, because that's where your solutions are going to be found. Your solution, that, That's what's going to give you the ability to look at what they're offering and say, no thanks, man, I got something better. And when other people see that you're able to say, no thanks, man, I got something better, they're going to want to have that something better, and they're going to duplicate what you've done, and they'll be able to say, no thanks, man, I've got something better. I want to say hi to my mom. My mom is watching. Kim Myers, hi, that's my mom. Hi, mom. I say hi to Becca Ray. Becca, thank you for watching. And you hi, said uh, individual, independent sustainability. Yes, exactly, Becca. And when I say individual, it's like, okay, it's one individual. It's also free association individuals together. But yeah, I'm, 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 I'm totally into that. Mitch, Mitch Spethjoy, Mitch, Mitch is a uh, Mitch. Would you? Well, Mitch basically would like everybody to go back to hunting and gathering. And honestly, Mitch, you know, I, I think you know that's incredibly unrealistic that it's ever going to happen. But I'm going to tell you, I don't believe that you can objectively say that going back to hunting and gathering wouldn't be a better thing. Honestly, I really, <laughs> you know, the more, the more individuals they are, there are the, the closer in proximity to, to, to one another that there are, the more, the more that they tend to want to get some sort of external security from some sort of strong man that their neighbors aren't going to hurt them. The more spread out they are, the less inclined they are to seek a strong man to protect them from their neighbors. And of course, did the, have you seen have you seen the story anyway? Have you seen this is that uh, that story um, with the uh, uh, I don't know what they are they were professional corporate professionals or whatever and they've given up their uh, their 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 modern life and they've moved into the Appalachian Mountains and they have like I, this self sustaining village that they have like a little hippie commune. No, I haven't seen that. I I need to learn more about that. But there's there's other weird experiments going on I, I i know there's slap city out in california which is an interesting experiment uh there's there's just stuff that's happening that 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 we're not talking about like i i i i, I pay attention to what's going on in rahava i pay attention to what's going on in somaliland and actually somaliland is kind of disappointing me i'm not gonna lie to you somaliland has a lot of great uh stateless kind of aspects to it but it looks like they've kind of gone a little bit dark recently. They're past some. They're 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 going after reporters, and it seems I I, I haven't dug deep enough into the story. I'm waiting to find out more. But uh, there may be some problems with Somaliland. I don't know. But but I'm still I'm paying attention to Somaliland. The areas where I see okay, they're they're at least attempting to experiment with free association type of governance. I'm paying attention and I'm trying to highlight that for everyone. You know, uh, uh, nobody's talking about these things. Instead, everybody is spending hours on end debating whether Donald Trump is a fascist or not. I don't, 
I don't think he's a fascist. That's absurd. Uh, I, it's I do absurd. think that he has some fascist elements to him. I don't think that he's a fascist. I, you know, I look at Donald Trump and I see everything that has to do with immigration and how he's approaching immigration scares the crap out of me. I'm not going to lie. There's some chilling stuff. Uh, even when I, uh, you know, I have to look more into the story to find out exactly what what's going on. But uh, uh, the a suggestion that the Trump administration is sending warnings to politicians that they're going to be penalized. I don't know what that means. Does that mean that they're going to arrest politicians now that are having? I mean, without race? without without having all the information and having it come straight from the horse's mouth, I would probably assume that what they mean are you know you're going to uh, stop federal aid and they're not going to give you give your city the money that uh, that comes rolling in from the federal government. But I don't know. Who knows? Are they going to line them up in I the don't street? Know, but who but, knows? But the idea that that you have people showing up in restaurants all across this country and and these okay. You're showing up at a restaurant and you're taking people out of those restaurants who were working and you're shipping them out, man. I just, I'm really uncomfortable with that. And, you know, I happen to look a way that I won't be threatened, most likely. But if you don't look like I do, if you don't look like you do, uh, you're, you're living in a, in, in, in a world where if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, you know, yeah, you're you sweating, dude. You're an American dude. citizen, and you're speaking with a thick accent, and you look a certain way. You could end up on the ice van because you don't have your ID on you. That's the world that we're kind of living in. That stuff, that that creeps me out, man. I'm not going to lie to you. That stuff creeps me out. That That's the thing that bothers me the most about the Trump administration. But when I see all these folks, they're calling the they're calling Trump horrible. He's like, you know, he's worse than Hitler. He's Stalin. Who do they want to replace him with? Hillary? Bernie Sanders? These are freaking killers. <laughs> right, right. right. You That's want to an improvement. replace a killer with a killer? I have no sympathy for you. I can't relate to you. I don't hear your pleas because your pleas are calling on one death head to replace another. I don't hear that. I'm not listening to that song. We ended up basically on, I don't know, the show went weird. Yeah, we went off the rails. <laughs> I, 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 that's okay. I'm, I'm, you know what? Yeah. We, 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 uh, that's fine. And some of our shows, that's what's <laughs> going to happen. We're going to have shows where, you know, we have format. I have a format that we roughly follow, but I don't believe in setting things in stone. I think you're with me there. I, right. I, I it's a little better speaking, when you have some fluidity. Yeah, we we have to be able to sometimes just break it and just do what we're going to do. Uh, I don't know how you feel, but for me, I feel a lot of pent-in frustration. Uh, everything that I'm seeing around me. And the things that I'm most frustrated about is not the politicians. I know who they are. I know what they do. They're doing what they do. It's the people around me that are they're just... Their whole lives are consumed with this this toxicity, with this hate. Well, and it's 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 you know it it, uh, it it's the team, it's the team mentality. I don't, I don't mean not that there's anything wrong with you know being on a team or being part of a team. You have to just be careful that you don't become consumed by this team mentality. And you might be asking yourself right now, what do I mean by by that? And I guess the best uh, the best example that I can give you the most. Uh, close to home example for 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 a lot of people is going to be this you know the football teams and 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 the NFL and the football and you know you you're sitting on the couch at home and you say oh we did this or we did that or we did this somebody comes in and they have the wrong jersey on and you're you know you're you're foaming at the mouth I mean I I live in Texas yeah, man really... I've seen people who like you wear the wrong jersey and that's it you're done you're out they will not speak to you yeah, you're that's like it Mitt, you are Mitt, a pariah. Mitt, so... Yeah, Mitch said tribal mentality, right? Right, and that's and that's exactly what what starts to happen here. And you have, you know, friends and neighbors. You know, your 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 friend or your neighbor is a uh, a registered Democrat, and they will defend that position to the death. They will advocate for you know your children being murdered in the street because you don't agree with them. And where a lot of this stuff was 
30, 40 years ago was underneath people's the surface. It's just become so fresh and so raw and so right on the surface and displayed plainly out for everyone to see that, uh, I mean, it's just crazy. You know, I, I, have, I, have, a, I have a good story for you. It's like, uh, you know, like a, 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 you're a vegan or a vegetarian, you know what I mean? And you're sitting at a, a family dinner and you're, you know, let's say it's Thanksgiving and you're, oh, you're enjoying your tofurkey, but the rest of your family is eating turkey and you're there talking about how, you know, how horrible meat eaters are and they're so, they're inhuman and I wouldn't even associate myself with these terrible meat eaters. They're just all fundamentally horrible people, these meat eaters, and you're chowing down on your tofu, but your your family is sitting there at the table enjoying turkey and that's what's become of, everything is like that now, just everything. It's just that visceral anger. I don't know, I can't even, I don't even know where it's even, where it even comes from. People can't even sit down and talk to each other and disagree and have a a, a civil conversation that where, where they disagree on the on on the topic. It just becomes so so angry that it go it immediately goes to eye gouging and stabbing. Well, I I think there's a number of reasons for it. Uh, one, the I think the the most important point. I might be wrong, but I believe it's the most important point, and that is that the stakes are so much higher. Uh, if your tribe is not the one in power, then you can expect to have some pretty draconian things coming your way and, and a lot of things that you really think should be happening. Not only will they not be happening, but everything that you built will be destroyed. Uh, what's going to happen? You know, Donald Trump has done a lot of things with with regulations and 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 executive orders. What do you think is going to happen when the next person comes in? They're going to totally undo Donald in the same way that he's undoing Barack. And then you have you have the you have social media and how social media has has suddenly made us acutely aware of all the all the opinions that we had that we once didn't talk about all that much. Now we're seeing it and it's in our face. You know, all the time, like Facebook, Facebook wants to try to, you know, they change their algorithm so that people will start to talk to each other more. And they think that'll be a good thing. I don't think it'll be a good thing unless people fundamentally change how they talk on Facebook at Facebook. And I don't think near term, at least, I don't think that's going to happen if if they actually succeed in helping people build uh, their echo chambers. <laughs> Because right. you're just going to talk to your own friends and your own family. Right. You're that's going the, to that's hate two, each other even more. Right. These, that's <laughs> the two options that you have with social media. You either have a battleground or an, or, or an echo chamber. There's, there's no – there's never a productive yeah, discussion. They want you to talk never. to your friends and family. But your friends and family are a certain kind of tribe. They don't belong to all the tribes that you belong to. And right. Right. That's when the fight started, you know. <laughs> right, 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 right. When, so I, I, when, when, when Joe from the group that you belong to starts engaging with Aunt Sally on your on your page, that's when uh, that's when the fireworks start, man. <laughs> you know, that's when you pop your yeah. popcorn because it's yeah, about so, to get interesting. Yeah, it, things things are going to get interesting if Facebook is successful in 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 having your news feed more and more show your family and your friends because that's what they they want you to authentic whatever they determine means authentic but they want you to authentically connect to your family and friends because that's what facebook was originally uh right. created for well that's not what facebook is anymore they're friendest facebook. but what if you don't have any family or friends what if you're like I mean, you know what yeah. then? what then? who do you associate with then who are I you going to converse with mark zuckerberg when you don't have friends or family <laughs> I don't, you know i don't i don't you work know the story, third but... shift you work the third shift. You come home alone to an empty house. You're the last one in your family. What then? And come on, what is Facebook? What is Facebook for? I'm not going to – Facebook is different things to different people, but for, for most of us, there's one reason or another, Facebook, it's the public square where we could stand on top of the, you know, the, the, the platform and, and make our speech. And before you you weren't even the thing is before there was the the proliferation of Facebook there's a lot of thoughts that people had in their head that never came out that were never formed because they knew there was nobody that was going to listen 
But now on Facebook, everybody, I mean, I do it. I know you do it. I've seen you do it. Right. We all do it. You know, we put stuff out there. We're like, I'm not speaking to my friends and family. I'm not just making nice talk about, you know, what I ate for dinner. I'm putting, I'm testing out thoughts. I'm trying to provoke responses. I'm get. I love the reward. The reward that Facebook gives you is you get feedback. Hopefully you get feedback for your thoughts. Feedback is like an affirmation of yourself. Whenever you get feedback, it affirms you. It secures your identity that I am. I exist. I'm important. Right. People yes. are responding to me. Right. I and I'm not the only me. one who feels like this. I'm not That's the only one that feels like this. Right. And so you got all these people and they're like, they're testing their thoughts in ways that they weren't before. They're exposing themselves in ways that they weren't before. And they're finding out, you know, Aunt Frances, Aunt Frances is a dirty, rotten Trump voter. He's not just a Trump voter. Aunt Frances, holy crap, Aunt Frances was the lady in the video that holds her baby up to Donald Trump like she says, like she's, you think she's saying, please eat my baby. That's Aunt Frances. <laughs> holy crap. I mean, I kind of liked her, but. <laughs> right, right, but now I'm terrified. <laughs> you, you lost me at eat my baby, Donald. <laughs> <laughs> And metaphorically, uh, <laughs> we're all making those "eat my baby, Donald" statements to our <laughs> friends and family all the time. So, yeah, and and be, because people are seeing more and more communication, there's more shock and awe that you need to get attention, and so the rhetoric it's just ratcheting up. Oh, it's just it's so it's so insane. That's how we get to the point where everyone who disagrees with you is a Nazi. I mean, this, this is, that's how we've gotten to this point right now. And now that Nazi thing is like, that's passe, man. You got you to gotta step it up a notch. Now you're a pedophile. Right, that's old. Right. That's old. Right. That's old news. Right. Nazis. <laughs> that's so yeah. yesterday. I mean, I'm waiting because this is when you know, okay, I'm not saying that the bombs don't go off beforehand, but you definitely know the bombs are going off. If you start seeing people lobbing, you're a necrophiliac to one another on a regular right. basis. Head to the hills. Head to the hills. <laughs> Get in the bunker. Get <laughs> in the bunker. <laughs> as soon as necrophiliac becomes the uh, the go-to insult, <laughs> head for the hills. Because I, right. I don't know if you get can get lower than that. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. You're you're a necrophiliac who only targets children. Oh, there you go. Okay. Right. Then. <laughs> And you right. know. It's oh, at that point, it's over. <laughs> at, at that, that point, the bombs have already gone off, right. and you're right. still arguing with the radiation glow around you. <laughs> that's right. that's where we get to. So Mitch uh, said, I bet if the overlords did actually eat babies, people would get in line with their babies. I think you're right, Mitch. I, think I wouldn't that tell. A lot of people would get in line with their babies. I, th yeah, I, I, I actually, know. actually, Mitch, I have a great story that goes right along with that. Uh, a few years ago, uh, myself and a friend of mine, this was, I was still living back in Pennsylvania. Uh, myself and a friend of mine, we had uh, decided that we were going to go do some men on the street interviews. And I don't know if he still has this up on YouTube or not. Uh, I'll have to check. And if he does, I'll, 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 uh, I'll put the, uh, put the link out somewhere, either on Facebook or wherever. Um, anyway, though, we were conducting these men on the street interviews on the 4th of July and we were talking to uh we were, we were asking people about um it was during the obama administration and uh, we were asking people about some of the specifics of the national defense authorization act and uh you know we came across this uh middle-aged gentleman i'd probably say in like his 50s and uh we started asking him about you know does he know oh yeah he knew about the nd he was very very knowledgeable about all this stuff and so we just threw out this hypothetical for this guy because he was uh, very, very supportive of all these policies. So we asked him the question, what if it was you? Let's just go to like the worst place with this. And let's say that, you know, you woke up tomorrow and the Obama administration had decided that certain people were going to be rounded up on trains and they were going to be shipped off to re-education centers or concentration camps, whatever you want to call them. This guy went as far as to say like that if, if you know, if it was a member of his family, his kids or grandkids, he would fully support that because he knows that you know the administration would have done their homework and they know what's best. And if they decided that they were going to send his kids or his grandkids 
on, get on the train, he would be there standing and fully supporting them. He even went as far as to say that if it was him they came for, he would go because he would still feel that the administration, the government, knew best. And that's that's exactly what you said right there. People would get in line with their babies. Yeah, and uh, and that's I don't I don't want to close on that downer of a note. Uh, I you know what? L- let's, <laughs> let's. We have to end on a hopeful note. We can't I, end on eating babies. We can't end on, on, can't no. end on eating can't babies. Do it. So cannot. <laughs> I I guess I will end it with, uh, or unless you have a better ending. Um, but one thing about people, human beings, uh, they usually, I believe that they form identities around what they believe is useful for them to have a certain level of a security and assurance in life. And if they see people with different identities that, that aren't bludgeoning them over the head with their different identities, that are that are actually thriving, and they're thriving in a way that they're inviting you to take part in that thriving, I, I, I it, it's it's kind of like uh, people if they think they can get away with it, they'll pirate cable TV. You know, they'll pirate the cables. Uh, people are always looking for ways to avoid paying taxes. You know, if they have to fudge things a little and declare expenses that aren't really necessarily expenses. You know, they're, you know, the, 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 the speed limit is 55, but they know this stretch. There ain't no cop around, so they're going 80, 90. Uh, people, people, will, people generally want to do things their way. And, and wherever they see opportunities to do things their way in which they don't fear the repercussions of the coercive enterprise, they'll take it. So if we can go out, we in you know we who reject the coercive enterprise model, if we can go out and we can provide uh, vehicles for them to be able to uh, make their own choices outside of what the state says that they can make. I think a lot more people are going to come along with us. They're the, and, and their identities, they won't change at first. It's kind of like they'll wake up and suddenly realize, Hey, I don't, I don't really need to be a Democrat. Hell, I don't, I don't really need, need or they to need, need to be able to see that it works and it's viable before they're going to, they'll, uh, they'll experience it before they understand it. Right. That, that that's where, that's why it's our job. That's why it's our job to do those things. Yeah, yeah. So, and and there's so many opportunities. There's so many tools available for 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 us to be able to do that. And uh, Mitch said, "Face palm." I rest my case. I think he's responding to the to the to the anecdote that that you related. Do you have anything? Do you have any last hopeful things to say before we we shut down this show and? move on with our lives yeah, i would i would you know we started out the show talking about net neutrality and talking about you know the internet and the, my government and my internet and all that kind of stuff and what i what i would like to see is i would like to see some local liberty-based alternatives uh to these big government in bed with government uh, uh isps and shit let's shake things up a little bit let's shake it up a little bit let's give them something to really 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 be afraid of yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the government is most afraid of anonymity and self-reliance. Anything that you can do to help advance those two things and make it easier for people to enter into those realms, that's <laughs> that's going to be far more effective than than debating over whether Donald Trump said shitholes or not. Just right. Saying. Right. And the, and the desire is there, the want is there, the market is there. It just needs someone to provide to fill that gap, to fill that niche. And and these people are out there, and I'm trying to find them and relate more of the stories. And pay attention to iState.tv tomorrow. I have two stories in the queue of two anarchists that I've never heard of uh, that I've stumbled across that are doing some interesting work. Really pay attention to the crypto anarchists. Those are the ones that are really out there 
on the leading edge. And with that, I think we'll uh, we'll we'll say goodbye. I'm going to be back tomorrow in the afternoon, 12:30 p.m. for headlines you may have missed. That's on my personal Facebook page, Paul Gordon. You can friend request me, and if you're not a total weirdaholic, like you can be a status, I'll still I'll still accept your friend request. But if I see like totally nutty stuff, I'm probably not going to uh, friend request you back. But <laughs> I do that show every Monday through Friday, 12:30 p.m. Easter Standard Time. Tomorrow night, I'm going to be on with Lou Sander at this place still, Liberty Principal Facebook page, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I don't know what we'll end up doing tomorrow night, but we're scheduled to do our segments, uh, uh, Shorter Leash, uh, Longer Leash, and Off the Leash. That's that's Those are the, the general topics that we'll be covering tomorrow. I don't even know what we'll be covering tomorrow yet. And so on that note, Niz, you want to say goodbye or anything? Yeah, absolutely. I got some plugs. Got some plugs. Oh, yeah, plugs. That's right. Uh, yes, you, can, uh, you, can join, you can join me Friday night, uh, 10 p.m. Eastern, on the Liberty Radio Network. That's lrn.fm, 10 p.m. Eastern, for the Tortured Report. And uh, my co-host, Matt Taylor, and I, uh, we talk about stuff. Yeah. Talk about stuff, so come on over. I, I finally got to listen to a live show last week. I really enjoyed it. It was great. And uh, I recommend it to all my friends. And I still want you to figure out that whole archive thing so we can play archives of your shows in a reliable manner instead of, oh, will they replay it at such and such a time? No, 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 no. I want, I want a, a, a static place where I can go right, when I right, want right. to. I want it when I want to it. it. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> All right, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'll say this. Uh, I do have a little, little, a little uh, sign-off that I'm going to be trying out and see see how well I, I I I like it. I'm using it for headlines you may have missed. I think I'll use it for this show in particular. The Wednesday is daily. Remember, those who need to control thoughts need to control news. Bear that in mind whenever you're reading anything out there. And on that note, we'll say good night.